everyone. Welcome back to Conversations from the Heart. Today we are joined in the studio by Supreme Grand Master Abel Villarreal. Sir, welcome, welcome to the show. show. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. It's a it's a distinct honor to have you on the show, sir. You know, I first uh, encountered you a few years ago when we went to your tournament for the first time. And um, I know you have been doing martial arts for a very long time. I think this is going to be your 51st year. 51st. Yes. And you were telling me before the podcast that it could, would be 53 if not for COVID. So that's a really long time to do martial arts, pure hand. Um, but to run a tournament, that just goes to show the enormity of your experience. And yes, um, I think that's a, probably a good place to start because even though, um, you know, we've been to a tournament a few times, we never really had a sit down conversation like this. And I'm, I'm really curious to hear um, how you got started and where you're at now. And I know you kind of come from um, that, that sort of blood and guts era in in in, in karate and taekwondo uh, in those very early early days, and that's a really cool time. And probably a lot of our students will find your story really inspiring. So, yes, I uh, I actually uh, was bullied a lot when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and because I came out of uh, <clears throat> strict and poverty, more so. You know, I didn't, I didn't get my first pair of shoes till I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. I went around barefooted. I used to go around trash cans and uh, get food out of the drumsticks. Wow. So that's right. I have uh, 15 siblings. Wow. You know, my father was working as an auto mechanic. Wow, he was busy. $5 a week. Uh, my mother abandoned us when my youngest brother was six months old. Oh, mm -hmm. man. So uh, we had to pretty much, I started working when I was five years old, picking cotton. I worked wow. in cotton fields. Uh, so did my other siblings. And if I wasn't picking cotton, I was selling cardboard at downtown. I was shining shoes and, uh, you know, selling newspapers, you know, mm. just to survive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And wow. I went to school. When I went to school, I had uh, two shirts and one pair of pants to my name, and they were high water. My pants had a hole about that big around in the back, and then uh, I had no underwear. And no shoes. Wow. So I was a left in stock at school and I was everybody's scapegoat. Mm -hmm. And I got tired of being picked on day in, day out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. So I started boxing. Took up boxing. And eventually I ended up boxing for 17 years. And one of the uh the first encounter that I had to martial arts was back in 1955. Mm -hmm. And I was looking, we, it, was, it was a tournament that was being held at Bertram Air Force Base in Austin. So we went around looking for the gymna gymnasiums where they were having this boxing tournament and everything else. And I heard a bunch of screaming and hollering and, and everything else that was going on in this one particular building. So I peeked in there out of curiosity. Yes. And I, I saw people getting thrown over their shoulders and so on and, you know. Uh, and that took me back to Dick Tracy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Dick oh, yeah. Tracy. Yeah, yeah. And because I was a, a big fan of Dick, Dick Tracy. Yeah. And ideally, right there and now, I said, "Wow, this is this is an opportunity for me to be able to to uh, you know get into what I had been dreamed of. I, I, I'd all, always been dreaming of, of Dick Tracy and yeah. somehow being like him and everything else. Mm -hmm. and it was kind of my idol. You know, throwing That's people over their shoulders. Yeah." So the next thing I know, I enrolled in someone and, and I earned my black belt in judo and jujitsu. Uh, wow. Yes, uh, I was introduced to the Korean art back in the, in the early 60s. And, uh, and then uh, opened up my school in Austin in 1965. Mm. So, uh, and uh, wow. That's a lot my first tournament was held in 1970. And I was promoting a lot of uh, kickboxing and, and and boxing and so on at City Coliseum here. Mm. 1988, when it, 1987, I just won the fall for the world title, professional kickboxing. It was a 12 rounder. I won it up knocking down the first round. Uh, I had 33 professional fights and I had 33 knockouts. Yeah. And uh, had a strict record of that. So, uh, that's amazing. I've been teaching uh, Hakido and uh, Taekwondo, and I don't teach Judo or Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, I used to years back, but it was taking more time than what I wanted to. I wanted to focus mm -hmm. more on the mm -hmm. Korean system as mm -hmm. far as mm -hmm. back one mm -hmm. So I put that behind me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I'm up to my tournament now. Uh, and mm -hmm. this will be, like you said, my fifth first annual. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it was completely different in the beginning. Mm-hmm. In 1970, when I promoted the first tournament, I had 800 competitors. Wow. But the reason being is that there were dead in tournaments around. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of Dallas, Fort Worth, area supporters, and so on. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, I had 10 divisions. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. If you were a kid and you wanted to fight in the adult division, I don't know how yeah. There were no restrictions. Yeah, you know? I like that. Uh, competition was different. You know, you could sweep and stomp and hold mm-hmm. in the ground, everything else. You know, the guy couldn't continue. You won. Yeah. See? But over time, it became too bloody. You know, mm-hmm. too, uh, there was too many injuries and everything else. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we, uh, a bunch of us got together and we formed the amateur organization of karate. Mm-hmm. In the 70s. And we Is formed the AOK or AOK. Yes, sir. So you were you were principally responsible for the, the founding of this organization. Well, the founding part. Yes. Wow. And uh, we formulated a lot of rules and regulations with the house. And over the years, we've added more and more rules and so on. Mm-hmm. The reason for the rules is is for the safety of the competitor. Yes, sir. That's important. It's become extremely safe mm-hmm. for everyone and anyone. You know? mm-hmm. uh, I can't say that. Back then, mm-hmm. but I can't say it now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you went to a tournament back in the, in the early 70s, you know, you mm-hmm. could expect getting out of there with a, with a broken nose, broken mm-hmm. rib cage, or bloody nose, or something to that effect. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. 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 And uh, people literally went to a tournament just to get busted so they could say that, you know, they they were. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, which is a totally uh, different way of thinking nowadays. Mm-hmm. Uh, nowadays, you go to a tournament. Basically, to, to uh, display and just to show and, and be able to utilize under a controlled environment what you've learned up to that point yes, with an individual that's basically your own rank, your own age mm-hmm. category, and so on, with all the rules being implemented. So it's extremely, extremely safe. Yes, uh, we haven't had injuries at all. You know? mm-hmm. yes, sir. Uh, and we, we really enforce those rules, you know. Uh, as far as like no face contact, where it used to be where you could hit to the face, knock them out. If you couldn't continue, you won. Yeah. yeah. Of course, now you hit to the face, you know, regardless, you know, uh, you, you lose a point. Mm-hmm. Second time, you lose another point. Third time, you get disqualified. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yes, sir. so that basically uh, tells the competitor, look, you need to disregard the face. Mm-hmm. Because no one goes to a tournament to get injured. You know? Yeah. And yes, the sir. main focus for a tournament is safety. Safety is priority above all, if they have. Yeah, that's really important. No exceptions to the rules. Mm-hmm. And the rules that we have set up are, 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 are there for, to stay. We don't modify the rules. We don't say, well, because of this, we're, no, we're there, you know, and we have guidelines and so on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, every year we meet in December and we go over the rules, see if we need to add or modify or whatever. And we utilize a parliamentary procedure. You know, it's not just, you know, a, you know, it's the majority of your mm-hmm. rules. Yes, sir. So, but we've come a long ways. Yeah, long ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long ways. Yeah. So, has your tournament been around since before the AOK or since the beginning of the AOK? Before. It's before. Before. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. The My tournament is the longest existing tournament in Texas and among the top so, five in the United States. Yes, wow, sir. that's really cool. So it's like a little piece of history, guys. If you yes, go sir. to this tournament, you know, I think um, that's really special. Yes, it used to be at one point in time in the AOK where uh, if you wanted to be able to, to earn the title of state champion mm-hmm. at the end of the year, you had to travel all over the state, mm-hmm. all over the state. Mm-hmm. And what, what happened was it was getting too much of a, of a, become too much of a burden mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Uh, mm-hmm. In terms of expense and everything else, you know, yes, sir. from Austin to El Paso and mm-hmm. all the way down south and so on. So, what we did, we broke the state into regions mm-hmm. central region, north region, east region, and so on. Mm-hmm. So, competitors no longer had, they no longer needed to go and travel a distance, you know, other than their own region. Yes, sir. Uh, and for example, the central region became Austin, San Antonio, Waco, you know, mm-hmm. that, that particular area there. You know, mm-hmm. and so at the end of the year, what would happen is that you would go to state. You know, the top five from your region would compete against all the other top five from all the other regions yeah. to determine state champion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. And it's more economical. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, mm-hmm. so yeah. then, so not everybody is going all to the same tournaments. It's like okay, we break it out into regions, 
here's the top five here, top five here, top five. And then it's like, all right, top five come exactly. together. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, sir. So that's that's at the end of the year. We were looking at the calendar uh, that was laid out, the 2023 calendar. So that is going to be in December. December. First in weekend, San first weekend in December. And it's going to be in uh, Houston. Okay, is, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, now, it doesn't mean that other, other people from other regions can't compete in a different region. They can. Yes, sir. But their points, you know, they, they won't get the points for that particular region. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And you want to get the points for your region, represent your region. Yes, sure. sir. Now, we have uh, over 150 divisions, mm -hmm. which means that there's a division and a category for everyone. You know? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. From five and under. Mm -hmm. All the way up to you know fifty five and over. Mm -hmm. I also have a division uh, for in the, for kids that don't want to necessarily compete in, in traditional forms or for mm -hmm. forms or or fighting and so on. They get out there and they can do anything and everything they want to do. Mm -hmm. And everyone's a winner in that division. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everyone. So, what are some examples? So, in that division, what is what's the name of that division? Is it just open or what? It's it's a uh, uh, open division. Okay, yes, and it's the first one on my uh, on my uh, flyer there. Okay, yes, sir. And they can do anything. Any they can get out there and just make three, four movements. You know, if they want to. You know, yes, sir. Whatever. You know, there's, there's no limit as to what they can do. Mm. It doesn't have to be anything that's prearranged either. Mm -hmm. But it's to kind of motivate them. You know, to yes, motivate sir. them. Yes, sir. Look what I've achieved. Look what I've accomplished. Yes, sir. And everyone's a winner in that. And we, we don't necessarily have first, second, third place in that division. The awards that they get says winner. Mm. Yes, sir. So everyone's a winner. Instilling that confidence. So, yes, sir. Some of my students were wondering because there's a, a bunch of different forms uh, categories. What what are those categories and how do they differ? And there's like open, traditional, freestyle. We, is that we, we have open to open forms. We have traditional forms. Uh, we have musical forms. Okay. Mm. Uh, we have... Uh, Team forms, yes, sir, and so on. So I would assume traditional is going to be like you know Palgue or you know some karate form, and then like exactly. open is like you can create basically create your own form, you create your own form. Yes, okay. yes sir. Mm -hmm. And then that would be different from musical forms where you have like some music in the background and you're doing your mm -hmm. jam, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the traditional forms, mm -hmm. uh, it it does have to be a traditional form. You know, mm -hmm. if we start seeing spins and whirls, mm -hmm. everything else, and so on, that. You yeah, yeah, yeah. So, keep that similar level. Yeah, absolutely. For the younger students, you know, we have a little warriors program here at the school. We go from four years old to six years old in little warriors, and some of those students, you know, do feel like, oh, you know, maybe I want to get out there and try something. Mm -hmm. So, what what are the opportunities for, you know, that five and under? We, did, we just went to a tournament not too long ago, and they had an event called Spirit, and it was for like little warriors to get out there, and they did. You know, just do a little routine like the, with the instructor. He stands out there and he's like, "Okay, like ha and the kid punching. You know, just to you know, give them some experience. That falls into the same same things I was talking about. Okay, yeah. Yes, sir. So, what division would that be? Would you say would that be the open or no? That that would be the uh, yeah the open open uh, uh, pee wee division. Okay. Yes, sir. And so anybody can compete in that one. Okay. Uh, now I also have a handicap division. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's cool. Uh, and uh, that one there, they, you know. But by the same token, as many divisions that we have, mm -hmm. there is a perspective division. For everyone, you know, mm -hmm. for yes, everyone. Yes, sir. Regardless of age, rank, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm curious about the process of you had mentioned with that initial tournament in 1970 having 10 divisions. And so going from 10, you know, over the course of 51 years to this, but you know, one, 150 divisions, is it just year by year going through that process of discussion with the rest of the AOK and saying, oh, you know, what, what are we feeling everyone? You know, do we feel like we need to split here or feel like we need to give these people probably never, opportunities? Probably never. Yes, I sir. realized after the first year, I realized that, you know, 10 divisions, Oh, that that puts a crunch on everyone. You know, that, mm. that's kind of, you know, and so the second year I had fifteen. Mm. I said, well, it still kind of doesn't feel right. You know? Yes, sir. And I kept on adding and adding and adding, 
And when we formulated the AOK, then we had certain divisions that needed to be in place regardless. Mm -hmm. And over the years, because we started the AOK, we, we didn't have as many divisions as we have now. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And so every year we had it, we had it, you know, we had got new producers that would come in, they would, you know, submit, you know, an agenda and so on. So, well, we need to add this, we need to add this. So we voted on it and we'd add more divisions and so on. You know, yes, sir. Up to the point that we're at now. Mm -hmm. The amount of divisions that we have now are required divisions by the OK. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We can't deviate from it. You know? mm -hmm. We can add divisions if we want to, but they're not going to be, con they're, they're not going to get the points for them. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I also have continuous sparring. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. On that. Continuous sparring is where there's no break in between. They just continue fighting everything else, and we've got click counters where we count them. Yes, sir. You know, okay. One for the red, one for, one, one for the white. And then this individual is focused on the, on the red here. Mm -hmm. Every time you see a point, they just click, click, click. click. Now, uh, with that, is that um, is there contact to the face with that, or the size of the head, or anywhere, or just only to the body? Only to the body. Only to it. So it's very much like Olympic style, it's like, I don't know, yeah. versus mm -hmm. karate plate sparring. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, yes, sir. Well, that's cool. And on, on continuous sparring, I've got 74 divisions strictly for continuous sparring beside the AOK. Holy cow, yeah. Yeah, a lot of divisions. With so many divisions, does it become difficult to keep everything together there? I mean, no. it seems like a lot of... No, you know, it. Uh, I've got it down for science. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would imagine if I came in as a newcomer, yes, it would be overwhelming. I mean, that, I was thinking, like, man, I'm trying to run a tournament with just 74 divisions in one aspect of the competition. That seems like a lot. But by the same there. token, the continuous part is a new for this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. It hasn't yes, been so. in the past. Because what I was saying, because last time I went, I think it was just points bar. Yes, so. Right. Yeah. So it's new this year. Okay. And, so, uh, that's exciting. You know, we're feeling it out, everything else. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I don't expect to get too many in that division. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. No. So, Thanks, bro. Yes, sir. Another question I have, um, you know, we want to give all those individuals the opportunity to show up. And as you said, you know, people are going to tournaments now not to get their nose broken, not to get their ribs cracked, but to find and match up with someone who is going to be able to work with them, you know, to exhibit both of those practitioners mm -hmm. skill, right? And, you know, we, we talk about going to tournaments to learn, right? There's no win or lose, it's win and learn. What is the process or what can students expect, you know, if they show up and they say, okay, I really want to um, go against somebody who's, who's at my level, who's really going to push me. If, they end up being in a position where maybe that person isn't right there across from them. How do you go about matching up that individual with someone who well, may not be in their division, but would be compatible, if that makes sense? Yes, it does, sir. Uh, see, the way we do it is that we, the way I do it is depending on who registers first, Okay. Yes, sir. For example, in forms, let me take forms first. In forms competition, those that register first are the ones that are going to compete last in forms. And there's an advantage to that because they get to be able to see the competition beforehand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, sir. They get to a better yes, feeling. It's an interesting yeah. idea there. Now, in fighting, those that register first are the ones that are more likely to get a buy. You don't mm -hmm. want to be by a buy. A yeah. buy is, is a uh, You've won the fight. You've won. you won that particular fight without having to, without having fought. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. For example, there's five competitors. That's odd mm -hmm. number. So mm -hmm. there's three buys. We got three buys here. Okay. Yes, sir. So that means that these two individuals that did not get a buy, they fight each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The winner is out, and then it moves over like this four. Now it's mm -hmm. even. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. And we have four places: first, second, third, and fourth. Yes, sir. So the ideal thing to do is to register early mm -hmm. to get a better place and a better seat all the way mm -hmm. around. So these forms are fighting. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But we don't necessarily match them there at the tournament, you know, because then mm -hmm. it would be unfair for those that registered first to try to get a better seat. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
but also, I've also done this in the past, and I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do it at any given point in time, is that, you know, I've formulated uh, different divisions right there at the tournament mm -hmm. you know, to yes, meet sir. the need of the competitors that are there. Yes, sir. See, which better fits what you're talking about there. So mm -hmm. sure yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So I last time we went, I did see that there was like some um, some promotions and stuff at your tournament. Mm. What other things have you included in your tournament over the years? Is that something that you typically do at your tournament, promote some of your higher degree black belts within your organization and things like that? Uh, what I do is uh, we have certain booths that sell different things. That, you know, but I also have people that sponsor, mm. the, the, the sponsors. Yes, sir. Uh, they sponsor whatever, a ring, concession, whatever they want to sponsor, they get sponsorships. And and the reason I have that is because what I do is during Christmas time, I sponsor families. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, I usually get about 150 referrals from churches, friends, and et cetera, et cetera. And then out of that, I, I select 50 families that I'm going to visit. I'm sorry, I make 50 home visits. Yes, sir. And out of those 50 home visits, I select 10 families that are at the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. And I sponsor each family with fifteen hundred dollars. I don't give them the money. I provide fifteen hundred dollars worth of whatever the need is. You know, yes, sir. And so on. Yes, sir. And then I, after doing so, then I try to I look for a job for anything else and so on. So that it becomes self sufficient. You know? Yes, sir. So that's what I utilize the sponsorship money for. Mm -hmm. That's really noble. And whatever whatever money I make at the turn of, I yeah. don't keep anything at all. Period. Yes, sir. Wow. I donate everything. It goes to the donation and so on. It goes to these people that are less fortunate. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and the reason I do this is because when I was growing up, I had no one to extend a helping hand to us. You know? yeah. No one, you know. And uh, we have to make do. Yeah. And so I, I always said to myself as a kid, you know, when I grow up and I'm in a position where I can extend a helping hand, I can help my fellow man, I'm going to do so. Yes, sir. So now I find myself in that position. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I do what I do. Mm, that's awesome. Yes, sir. That's really noble. So not only a piece of history if you come to this tournament, but you're also gonna give back to the community with you know the, those proceeds. So mm. that's awesome. And you've been doing it for 51 years. You've been giving back. I mean, that's that's incredible. Yes, sir. I mean, I think a lot of people would have done something like this in a couple of years and been like, yeah, you know, I've, I've done my good deed, you know. But no, yes, sir. Not, yes, sir. Few, sir. 51 years later, you're still giving back. That's awesome. So, you know, when I was in uh, Vietnam, I uh, I had a you know, number of uh, you know uh, life experiences where you know uh, I didn't think I was going to make it with that. Mm -hmm. so, and what kept going through my head was that you know just give me another day, another day, so I could have another opportunity because I had a I had a pre plan already what I was going to do. Once I got out of the service, in mm -hmm. terms of extending help in hand, mm -hmm. but I realized that if I was gone, my dream and my hopes, you know, and the endeavors that I had planned beforehand were going to be gone forever. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And I think that that has something to do with me kind of struggling and trying to survive. You know? mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Because I've had this thought ever since I was a kid. You know? Yeah, and it was very, it was rooted very deep within me. Mm. Mm. Getting to that day in the future, yeah. yes, sir, where you can extend that help. So, pivoting just a little bit, but on that same token, you know, as we set those goals, continue to grow and change and move toward the future, something I, I've been thinking about during the conversation is being in Austin and in the Austin area since the 1960s, 1970s. I mean, this area is one of the fastest growing areas in the country now. So being there for 60, 50, 60 years, what has your experience been like? I mean, I'm sure there's- I'm maybe, seeing the community change a yes, lot. I mean, yes, just sir. the buildings have changed a lot and the population. I remember when I-35 was a one, one road, gravel Ooh. road. Yes, sir. There's no bridge is over there. Wow. It was completely different in all areas. Give me an example. I attended uh, Palm Elementary, which is in the corner of 35 and East First. Now it's called Cedar Charles. Yes, sir. Across the street from my house. At that time, the West Side kids attended there and the East Side kids attended that school. 
and was divided. Uh, and the West Side kids, they they were able to sit in a desk and with a chair and everything else, and the East Side kids had to sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. Of course, we had no pen or pencil and everything else because we were told that we were not capable of being taught and not capable of learning. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, so th th times have changed. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, selling newspapers, you know, and having to change in my pocket. And, and at the time, I was maybe five, six years old, and I figured I'd get on the bus and I would, mm -hmm. would take it home, not knowing that I needed to know where where, where to get off. Mm -hmm. So I put the money in there. And I sit in the front of the bus. So uh, next thing I know, bus driver steps on the brakes, he grabs from the back of the yard, back of the pants, opened the back of the bus and threw me out. Wow. And I hit the curb and bleeding all over. Uh, I didn't realize, I didn't know I was supposed to sit in, I was supposed to sit in the back and the front. Oh my God. Wow. wow. And uh, people were sitting in the front, you know, I could see their hands sharing them on, hey, where you go? And so, oh my God. Uh, so yeah, it was different and times have changed. Yeah. But what that instilled in me, it instilled in me, I will never be like that. Yes, sir. I will yes, never sir. I refuse to be like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. As far as the martial arts community goes, how have things changed here in Austin over the years? And oh, you must I mean, have sort of been the center of it. Were you one of the you must have been one of the first schools? Um... I, I opened the first school in Austin. Yeah. Wow. And let me tell you a story about that. And I, I, I find it funny how you heard this stuff, but yes, sir. I, uh, I did a demonstration <clears throat> and uh, downtown area. Mm -hmm. And the demonstration was where I allowed a pickup truck to run over my stomach. And oh my I, God. I, I had some. I had uh, some concrete slaps on my head and breaking them with a slat chain. Oh my God. And that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, so next thing I know, I had a I had a a group of a mob in front of my school that following Monday, protesting and wanted, wanted to run me out of town. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a group of uh, you know Pentecostal church and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean that's uh, eh, neither here nor there. But uh, they because some they, strange they, sacrifice. they claimed that I was demon possessed <laughs> because they, they, they never seen anything like this. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, yes, sir. And that the only way possible that I was able to do that if I was geared and governed by the devil himself. Wow. But you know what? Oh, that, that pastor that led that five years later, he became one of my students and eventually became one of the black ones. That's, that's, well, that's a testament right there. Yes, sir. That's a funny story. That response that's something I've never heard, right? The, the response of, oh man, this feat that this person is performing can only be fueled by evil powers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was unheard of. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. I had a, a friend of a friend who got, uh, a friend of my brother's, uh, who got run over by like a truck. Is just a leg, and it like flattened his leg out and screwed him up for life, and he's like, walking like a cripple. So, I can't imagine just letting a truck run you over. That just seems like <laughs> so dangerous. So that's awesome. <clears throat> and what you take a break and you put it over your head, and someone takes a hammer and smashes it. It was flesh. I could do that. Oh my! I did that on my charm. Last time I did that was five years ago. Three five years ago. How old are you, sir? I'm. I'm up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. Because five or just five years ago. They say that you're the oldest you feel. So I yeah. Won one. Yeah. And uh, of course, I've never been sick of being. I mind. don't know if I put a, a brick on my head and have someone smash it with a sledgehammer. I think I'd probably be sleeping for a while. <laughs> but see, the, the thing is this: is that you know, we're dead. And, and I'm not talking. I'm not going to talk about this. No hopeless pokers on this and everything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't do that. Uh, but we have more ability and more capability than what we think we have. Mm -hmm. We have six senses that we don't utilize and they become dormant. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so uh, it's a matter of learning how to utilize what you're born with. Mm -hmm. We're born with a lot of strength, a lot of energy, a lot of power that, does, that lies within us. Mm -hmm. It's asleep. We just got to wake it up mm -hmm. and, and utilize it and know how to use, use it. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just got to tap into that latent potential, you know. It's like the fire walker. You know, I, I've been fire walking. But it's a matter of learning how to control your natural resources. Yeah. In fire walking, you need like walk across hot coals. You know, the, wow, you do everything. You like, like you walk across coals, you run yourself over a car. Well, it's, well what do you not do? Well, so <laughs> that's very much part of it. Yeah. That always has been, but it's been lost over the years. A mm -hmm. lot of a lot of been lost. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh the training, the condition of the hands, everything else, and so mm -hmm. like back in the day when you had to condition your hands. The Mac yeah. training. Yeah. That's, that's all been lost stuff. Mm -hmm. Now th there's a reason for that because if you're the, the the more successful you get, the more you achieve, the more you accomplish, the more power you're gonna generate, you're gonna generate based on your training. So, Mm -hmm. So if you hit something hard to where your hand is not conditioned, it's going to shatter. That's why professional boxers, when they hit, uh, they hit somebody else that they hit in the open hand, they break their hands mm -hmm. because of the power behind it. They, they're not so, used to the hand being conditioned. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of breaking in our school for, for exams and everything else. But the only reason why we implement the breaking is to show the individual what they're capable of inducing in the human body. Mm -hmm. yes, because we can stand there and tell them until our face turns blue, you know, with that, with that amount of power, with that amount, of, with that punch you have, you're capable of doing this and that. But there's always going to be those doubts within them. Mm -hmm. you know, can I, can I really? Mm -hmm. You're breaking because they've done studies on this. You know, for if a person can break a, 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 a one inch board, you know, 12 by 12, one inch board, they're capable of doing this and anything else. If a person can break three one inch boards, with a punch or whatever they can break with, that's equivalent to being born in the human body. See, mm -hmm. so you compare with that, and that lets the student know, hey, I'm capable of doing this. Sure. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. And that has more power than what you realize. You know, mm -hmm. it has more. It's a motivational tool mm -hmm. that's being used in a mm -hmm. very positive way, productive way. I love board breaking because it's like if you're not fully mentally engaged, you won't break it, and it really teaches you to have that indomitable spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And when they when they break it, wow! You realize I could do that. Look what mm -hmm. I can do. Now compare that to what you're capable of inducing in the body. Mm -hmm. So that's where your control comes in. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We just had our evaluation, and this oh, it's just one of the highlights of the whole yeah. Yeah. day. Is all right. Time to break those boards, and the mm -hmm. kids go out, and they're like, "Oh, I don't know, I don't know." But when they finally break through. I mean, the whole, it just erupts, you know, everybody's like, yeah, so excited. And the kids are cheering each other on. And it's definitely one of my favorite things to you know, like see. The, uh, uh, you, for example, being the head instructor here, yes, yeah. you have a huge, tremendous responsibility on your hands because in the in your hands, in the palm of your hands, you have their whole future there. Mm -hmm. One word can shatter mm -hmm. Or one word can motivate them to be able to excel to their full potential. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. One of the things I love about the board breaking at the very end of the evaluation is kind of like, you know, when you have the kid's birthday party and you bring out the pinata, you know, it's, yeah. it's always like a crowd pleaser. It really brings it all home. Sometimes our evaluations can go for three and a half hours, you know, like that. And, you know, by the end of it, they're all like leery eyed and, they're, they're doing their best to keep their posture and keep yes, their focus, sir. But, yes, sir. especially the younger ones. But when you start breaking out those boards, it's a big, you know, crowd pleaser and it really lifts the spirit. Yes, sir. But but it's also productive. It's also yes. productive. It's, it's, a, it's a huge tool for them to be able to utilize that. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we've gone for quite a while. I think we've talked a lot about your tournament are there any final thoughts that you want our students to know about well i'd like to invite everyone to attend the tournament uh it, it's it's a lot of fun you know it's all about having fun yes, it's all about having yes, fun sir. and so on uh it's not about getting hurt you mm -hmm. know uh if there's any questions any concerns and so on uh i feel better when they address them to me mm -hmm. yes, because sir. i'm the one that can Take care of whatever, you know. Yes, sir. Others don't really have the authority to do so, yeah. to, you know, like executive decisions and so on. You know. And yes, my main interest is what's best for the competitor, yes, not yes, what's sir. best for me or anybody else. You know. So uh, if they want to reach you, what's the best way to get in contact with you for regarding the tournament? Because some of my students are coming to me and they're saying, sir, 
you know, what division should I go in? And, you know, how do I register and all this kind of stuff? And I'm doing my best, but it's not my tournament. So my, my number's on the flyer. Okay. And I want to, that's my, my personal cell phone number. Okay. Yes, sir. So we'll, and they can call me at any given point in time, that no matter what it is, and I'll answer whatever questions they have and so on. Appreciate that. Yes, yes sir. Thank you. We'll pass that information on. Um, guys, I want to see you at the tournament. It's going to be a good one. And, um, you know, if not, because you want to get out there and compete, you know, go for a little history, a little Texan history there, or to give back to the community. I mean, there's so many reasons to go with a tournament like this. So yes, sir. We feel honored that, you know, Supreme Grandmaster has invited us out there. And uh and when you guys go, remember to, you know, show your 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 best face, your best sportsmanship. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. That handshake at the beginning and end is the most important thing to take away. Yes, sir. Want all of you to continue to excel to your full potential. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for coming out, sir. Thank you for having me up here.